Prime Minister Narendra Modi today attacked the Congress for not allowing the passage of GST bill in Parliament, addressing BJP workers in Bhopal this morning. The Prime Minister blamed Congress for dropping off the idea to call extended monsoon session of Parliament for GST bill's passage. The government, which had to give up its plan to call extended monsoon session of Parliament to get the GST bill approved, today said the winter session could be advanced immediately after the Bihar polls to pass the key reform measure, which it proposes to roll out from April next year. Asking Congress, which virtually vetoed the government's plan to convene the special session to eschew from negative politics, Parliamentary Affairs Minister M. Venkai Naidu said there is still scope for meeting the deadline for the GST bill and expressed readiness to call an early winter session. The 10th World Hindi Conference began in Bhopal. Addressing the conference, PM Narendra Modi highlighted the responsibility of every generation to preserve their heritage for future generations. The Prime Minister has urged the nation to work towards enrichment of Hindi language by adopting words from different languages and has asked to hold workshops between Hindi and other languages. Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has announced the achievement of the Karunya Benevolent Fund, which has distributed 800 crore rupees to over 1 lakh beneficiaries in Kerala. Kerala government's Karunya Benevolent Fund was launched to finance treatment expenses of poor people from the revenue earned from its Karunya lottery. The function was inaugurated by Kerala Chief Minister Umen Chandi. The BJP-led NDA allies have come close to clinching a seat-sharing deal for the Bihar Assembly elections, even as Hindustan Awam Morcha leader Jitan Ram Manji and Upendra Kushwaha led RLSP today authorized the BJP to take a final call on the issue. BJP's Bihar election in charge and Union Minister Anand Kumar held separate meetings with Kushwaha and Manji. Supreme Court has allowed the plea of Uber cab rape case victim that she and 12 other witnesses be not re-examined in the matter. The Apex Court was hearing a petition by Delhi Uber cab rape victim challenging Delhi High Court order permitting the recall and re-examination of 13 witnesses including herself. Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting Colonel Rajavardhan Rathore has said that since the Mudra Bank scheme was announced, loans worth 18,000 crore rupees have been approved by banks. The Minister of Speaking to Media Persons in Panaji. Union HRD Minister Smriti Irani has asked officers of the Adult Literacy Mission to fix age-wise target to attain complete literacy in the next one year. The union minister's statement comes close on the heels of her announcing plans to achieve complete literacy in villages by March 2016 under the Sansad Adar Gram Yojana. Three hardcore militants, including the chairman com commander in chief of the Dima Halam Dauga action group, were killed in an encounter with security forces today in Assam's Dima Hasau district. Acting on a tip off, the police launched an operation in Basabari area of the district and an encounter followed in which three militants were killed. Three months after the gruesome attack in Manipur that left 18 army personnel dead, NIA has announced a bounty of 17 lakh rupees for providing information about the two top leaders of the militant Naga group, NSCNK, including its chief SS Khaplang, who were allegedly behind the strike. With retail onion prices staying at elevated levels, the government has decided to import an additional 1,000 tons to boost domestic supply and check prices. A decision in this regard was taken at a review meeting chaired by Food and Consumer Affairs Minister Ram Bilas Paswan. Dozens of people were trapped in buildings and several missing after powerful floods ripped through parts of Japan in the wake of torrential rains. Military helicopters plucked stranded residents from roofs after waters surged over a wide area when a river burst its banks swamping a city of 65,000 people. Dramatic aerial footage showed whole houses being swept away by raging torrents in scenes eerily reminiscent of the devastating tsunami that crushed Japan's northeast coast in 2011. Nepalese Prime Minister Sushil Koirala made a fresh appeal to Madhesi parties, agitating over a proposed constitution to join its drafting process and help find a peaceful way to end the violent street protests that has claimed lives. Speaking at a program in Kathmandu to mark the 101st birth anniversary of Nepal's first elected Prime Minister B.P. Koirala, he said the people have mandated us to draft the constitution through the constituent assembly and we cannot dishonor the mandate of the people. Record numbers of migrants streamed through the Balkans into Hungary today, forcing Austria to suspend cross-border train services as Europe remained bitterly divided over how to cope with the refugee crisis. Germany itself under fire from eastern neighbors, 
over its willingness to take in refugees, warned that an EU plan to distribute 160,000 new arrivals among member states was a mere drop in the ocean. Captain Rani Rampal's hat-trick helped the Indian junior women team to convincingly defeat Malaysia 9-1 in their last league game of the 7th Women's Junior Asia Cup. With this win, India has qualified for the semi-final game of the tournament.